How's everybody going? Solon here from winterank.com, bringing you day two of week 10 of the Powerbilling 2 template by Barbell Medicine. If you like these videos, hit that like button, and if you want to see how the journey goes, hit that subscribe. I'll also put some links from my previous videos so you can see how the journey has come so far. So, day two involved competition style bench press, followed by pause squats with an SS joke bar and wrapping up with some beltless overhead pressing. Uh, first off, we obviously did some competition style bench press. So the usual, just starting off with the warm-ups. Um, I have been using the belt recently. Uh, that's going to change today. Uh, I have noticed I did a little bit better without the belt today. Um, so just walking through the warm-ups. The warm-ups went uh, really good. They felt solid. They all felt pretty quick. Uh, not too much shoulder discomfort or bicep pain up until the very end, but we'll get to that later. One thing I did want to stress or emphasize was in the, the setup for when you unrack the bar, try and make sure that your shoulders don't lift forward and retract. You want to make sure that they stay in that locked uh, in position. We spend so much time in the setup trying to get the chest out. So when we turn sideways, you'll notice that we spend so much time arching the back and making sure the chest is up. And if you unrack and then unlock the shoulders and bring it forward, you've lost all that work and you've pretty much wasted all that effort into trying to get that tension in the shoulder blades in the back and making that solid base to bench press off of. So one thing that I was working on today was focusing on maintaining the retracted shoulder blades, kind of both pinching the shoulder blades together and then thinking of pulling the shoulder blades down towards your butt. So those two things help with the cueing of keeping the shoulder blades open and keeping uh, a more efficient base for you to press off of. So just, I just wanted to address that with the bench press because I thought that was my technical focus for today. Generally, I like to pick uh, one little cue that I want to improve upon this, this session. So something that I, I'll watch my previous videos, watch how I've been tracking, um, how my progress is going. And if there's a deficiency technique wise, technical wise, pre previous week, that's what I'll focus on the following week or the next time I do that uh, exercise movement. That way we're always continually improving, we're always getting better and we're always adding in that next layer of betterment. We don't want to be stuck in our own way of bench pressing. Now, if you're a world record bench presser then by all means, stick with your technique because it's obviously working. But for, some, for pretty much everybody else, there's always going to be something that you can work on and I would dare say even the world's best are always continually making little steps towards progress. So for regular people, we're going to be taking giant leaps and bounds, improving that progress each and every week. The better and better you get at the movement, the smaller those improvements get. So all in all, we had a really great bench pressing session. We're actually able to pop up five extra pounds. We've got 320 for a brand new PR by five pounds. <laughs> Might not sound like much, but that's a great victory for me. Considering the last two weeks, I did kind of stall out at 315 for a single. So being able to put up that 320, just super stoked with that result. And another cool thing that I think I figured out is the reason I have been uh, almost blacking out during the overhead pressing. And it has something to do with my arching back and the belt combination, one of the two. Because uh, what happened was during my first attempt at 315, I got a nice solid art, like a really excessive arch and I had the belt coming in, got all that tension and got all that breathing and bracing right, tensed down and as the weight was lowering, I could feel my vision kind of tunneling down. So I just had to drop the weight, rest on the pins and just reset again and try it again. Took the belt off on the next set, no vision issues. So there's something with that really strong arch, which I know happens during the overhead press. Uh, especially when it gets heavy, it's something I tend to do. Not great, I know, but it's something I'm working on. In the meantime, I think I've cracked the code as to why I'm blacking out. There is something to do with the, the huge arch in the back that's creating some sort of blood pressure issue, I guess. I'm not quite sure what it is, but something to keep in mind. Uh, it is something that I kind of address later in my session today, so I'll get to that when I get there, mainly with the beltless overhead pressing. Uh, but nevertheless, great result 320 and I might have figured out why I'm blacking out so two great wins there uh, one of the downsides of today was my shoulders and bicep 
uh, inner bicep elbow joint area started to hurt a little bit so I did have to throw on some elbow sleeves uh, which helped a little bit but now that the session is over the elbow discomfort has almost diminished it's probably maybe 10% there so not quite uh, disappeared but still something to keep an eye on considering this is the last week of heavy bench pressing for this template I'll be mixing it up I'll take a bit of a rest for the next couple of weeks from straight powerlifting so we'll do some fun stuff and I'll keep you posted so make sure to subscribe so you're able to stay tuned as to what I end up doing for the next three to four weeks of off off season as it were just random training that I want to do but all in all Bench press session went well, uh, the elbows didn't really affect me too much, I could feel some shoulder issues starting to creep in towards the end of the session, but nothing to worry about, I just pushed through and we're all the better for it. So next up, we had the the pause squats with the SS yoke bar, and because I wasn't using the heel shoes throughout the lift, so we had a more flat base shoes, I'm using the uh, Reebok CrossFit Nanos, flex weave, something along those lines. Um, but more of a flat base, not really the heeled squatcher that I'm used to using. So we did have to angle the knees a little bit differently, make a little bit of adjustments with the with the shin angles and the torso angles. But I think it's not that big of a deal. I'm able to get down into that comfortable squat position and hold it. So really stoked with that. Again, very taxing. And just highlighting another point, the strength isn't linear. We actually had a 10 pound drop this week. Uh, wasn't able to hit the 250 pounds, so we were only able to get a top set of 240, but we repeated that for two sets of eight. So we got extra volume in there without increasing the intensity, which I'm not, again, too worried about, as, I'll talk, as I talked about in my previous videos. If I can't increase the intensity, I, I like at least like to increase the volume just so we are getting some more reps in there just to get more practice and uh, more muscle stimulus. So the pause squats, went well. Uh, you could probably see in the replay, they're not a true two count pause, more of a one, if I'm lucky. Maybe a half second pause, maybe maybe a, a half a breath pause and then I shoot back up. So definitely something to work on to keep in mind is to make sure that you are really doing that proper pause. I know the, the weather gets hot and you get tired. Maybe if these were the first exercise of the day, I'd be able to eke out some more some more weight or a proper two count, but nevertheless, it is what it is, and we are kind of comparing apples to apples at this point, because I'm pretty sure from maybe week five on, these have been one second pauses. So nothing to worry about, really, because we are doing the same stimulus over and over again. I am enjoying using the SS yoke bar after the bench press because it does alleviate, help alleviate the shoulder issues that I experienced during the bench press. So not having to pull the shoulder blades back for a for a regular barbell back squat so that's kind of nice the padding is starting to work its way in I believe I've had the yoke bar for about four months now and the padding is actually starting to starting to slightly mold to my shoulders which is kind of nice it's it's not as uh, rigid as it was before so it kind of settles into your into your shoulder joint. I guess that's a good thing with having your own personal barbell is that for something like the SS Shirk bar, the foam padding molds to you so it's like a custom bar that's made over the course of a year or at least a couple of months. Which is kind of cool, so I don't know how it would actually work in a regular more public gym with the with the padded barbells, how the padding actually helps there, but I'm sure 90% of the people will fit into the padding just fine. So. Just something to keep in mind, I highly recommend getting an SS Yoke Bar. It unlocks a lot of different squat varieties and movements you can do. Uh, especially things like the Hatfield squats, um, hands-free squats, so you're able to emulate a front squat with this. I mean, if your budget does allow, check out the Kabuki Transformer Bar. That's at, like next level, um, next level type camber bar where you can actually move whether center of gravity is where the weight plate is, the angle of the weight plate and the angle of the camber. So, so many different options there. If your budget can afford it, check that out. If not, the, the Elite FTS, the SS Yoke Bar. And alternatively, I've been hearing some good uh, news and some good reviews about the Titan Fitness SS, SS Yoke Bar. That, I forget what they call it, the Titan Bar or something along those lines. 
where they've almost carbon copied the SS, the Elite FTS version, so you're pretty much getting a 400 odd dollar barbell for half the price or something along those lines. I went with the SS Sherpa because Titan wasn't producing the version 2 that emulated the Elite FTS, so I went with the original and supporting American made is always a good thing. So moving on to the overhead press. Uh, this week, well, today's variety is the beltless overhead press and just because of the issues I've been having with the overhead press, I decided to change up the style of attack for the overhead press this week where I didn't want to do an AMRAP and hit and push my limits with the overhead press. I really wanted to dial it back, go back to the drawing board and focus on my technique with a lot lighter weight but with still keeping the reps up. So I did sets of 10 to 12 and really stuck super light. So we only got up to a weight of 85 pounds, which is really light. Uh, but I did want to focus on keeping that back straight and keeping the glutes fired up and really bracing into my core and abdomen. So to practice for the belted overhead press because the, the biggest thing that happens when the weight gets heavy for me is my is I lose that that stability in the lower back and it just arches forward and my, I get a really big layback. And not really a layback, more of a uh, more of a caving in at the hips it feels like because my back just really starts to arch in and based on what I was experiencing today with the bench press I have a really strong feeling that that's the that's what's causing some sort of blood pressure issues with my overhead pressing and the belt when it gets really heavy so I really just want to go back to the drawing board today focus on maintaining tension throughout the entire set so not really letting my glutes and abdomen relax in between the reps and not resetting as it were after each rep, so really just staying tight and engaging all the muscles for the entire 12 reps. Uh, that way it creates that uh, muscle fatigue and muscle memory so that when the weight does get heavy, I'm able to just almost think of it as a second nature to make sure that the glutes stay fired up and I don't lose that stiff and solid uh, core and lower back especially. Hopefully it pays off in the long run. Uh, it is something I do want to focus on, so I, I will probably will go back to the drawing board and address some technical deficiencies I have with a lot of the lifts that I'm doing. So especially the overhead press is something I've been wanting to work on. Uh, I really just wanted to aim for a body weight overhead press for at least one, and then that's the first benchmark, and then just move on from there. But I think once I can hit that body weight overhead press, the technique should dial itself in, and I'll be able to make some more leaps and bounds after that. So all in all, a great way to finish off the last day two for the Powerbuilding 2 template. I think overall it was great. Bench pressing, we hit a new PR, fantastic. And we got a little bit more extra volume in. Uh, the SS yoke bar pause squats, not as great, but we did get some extra volume in. And the overhead press, again, not going for the AMRAP, focusing on the technique, and I think I was able to identify some key weak points that I have, and I can start addressing those in the after the template is over. So, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. Uh, we have a new format, as you've noticed, where I talk at the end of the workout, and then just throw the clips in of me working out throughout the throughout that little talk. So, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I really appreciate you watching. I will leave uh, a link for my blog, winstrength.com where I actually do a weekly write-up of my training. That way I'll put the, the weights, the reps, the sets, and the RPEs, and a little hindsight 2020 thrown in there so that you can see what I'm thinking about and write a bit more about what I'm doing over the course of the week. Uh, I'll also leave links for the Barbell Medicine Crew where you can get digital templates like the one I'm using today as well as a host of other free resources which are really great to read and just educate yourself about strength development and strength lifting. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. This has been Selwyn from Witch Strength, and remember, a better life through strength.